who he know who does it better than this I'm the boy you done get it I'm on top of the list trying to get a good signal like a satellite dish every day to me it's like a solar eclipse I Yo, South African Geek, welcome to my channel. About to dive right into a Watch Mojo video. Top 10 stars who turned down huge money. What a poignant video to make while the world is suffering economically. Let's dive right in. Money isn't everything, even Jim for Carrey. the obscenely rich. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you? Punks. Welcome to Watch Mojo, Some and today we're counting H1. down oh. our picks for the top 10 <laughs> stars who turned down Let's crazy deals. For this list, we're looking at the biggest movie, TV, and sports stars who turned down lucrative contracts and deals. We won't be including musicians as they deserve their own list. Number 10. Keanu Reeves Speed is a masterpiece of action cinema. Do they want to bring him back for another speed? Excuse me, are you out of your mind? Speed 2 Cruise that Control is like the crazy finance. ant hiding in the attic that everyone sort of ignores. Sandra Bullock returned for the maligned sequel as Annie Porter, and Keanu Reeves was replaced by Jason <laughs> Patrick, kind of classic who plays Annie's boyfriend, happens. Alex Shaw. Like Bullock initially turned like, down the sequel, but eventually took it to raise it money for a movie she was producing or? called Hope Floats. We're supposed to, like, Reeves go was offered into $12 million dollars to return as Jack Travin, but he disaster. turned it down. Reasons People included thinking the script was awful, he didn't need the movie, and he had other projects in mind. Hamlet on stage in Manitoba, Canada, The Devil's Advocate with Al Pacino, and touring with his band Dogstar. It was just, uh, it was just Do a what makes you happy if you get I anything out of this I read video. the script and I was like, Ugh! Number nine, Bruce Willis. It's kind of weird for a movie star as rich as Bruce Willis to fight over a measly million. Well, let's just call me Mr. Church. Willis appeared in an uncredited cameo in the first Expendables as Church, and his role was expanded for The Expendables 2. He was all set to reprise the role for the third film, being offered a solid $3 million for just four days of work, plus a little four trip to days. Bulgaria. However, Willis God asked damn. for $4 million, effectively making his fee a million per day. A little extreme. Yo, that's nice. some bougie shit. The production shit, company's yo. response? Willis was dropped from consideration. Let's quit jerking off. Get down to business, Susan. <laughs> that's some bougie Number eight, shit, Michael Keaton. The of Batman course, series started to veer this. from dark, dreary Burton goodness to wacky, colorful hijinks with Batman Forever, a shift in tone that Michael Keaton was not shift having. Tone, now right. I've got it! Messed up the franchise. <laughs> There's too many questions. There's too many questions. There's just too many. <laughs> show you what it do any wrong, Keaton expanded his filmography wrong. by starring <laughs> in the first two Batman films and was offered to reprise his role for the third. Oh. As a little incentive, the studio was willing to offer him an astounding $15 million. 15? It's the kind of sum that aspiring actors dream about. Ah, However, Keaton was far from being an aspiring actor, and he abhorred that's, the more comedic money. and lighthearted direction that Bro, Batman Forever Jesus was taking, Pinson. so he turned them down. Was it the right decision, considering the reviews of the film? Yeah, probably. No and now he can come back and get Number seven, Jim Carrey. For the flash. Speaking of wacky, very few actors have a year like Jim Carrey did in 1994. Okay. Oh. In that he year alone, man. Carrey went from pretty much a nobody to the world's most popular movie star, thanks to The Mask, Ace Ventura Pet Detective, and Dumb and Dumber. The Mask made $350 million on a $23 million budget, ah, so of course New Line wanted more. They offered Carey $10 million to reprise his role, but to the surprise of everyone, he turned it down. He had not really enjoyed working on Ace Ventura when Nature Calls, saying that sequels were not challenging or gratifying as an actor. So what makes you happy, I repeat, but also do what makes you happy if you already got millions. <laughs> New Line tucked its tail between its legs and scrapped the sequel for the time being, realizing that it wouldn't work without Carrie, which they really should have stuck to considering Hello, my baby. we got the Hello, of the my baby. <laughs> Ooh. Number 6. Sean Connery Gandalf is just one of those roles that you can't see any other actor in. A perfect marriage between actor and character that they seems like a gift back. straight He's from the movie back, Gods. Back, and to think it almost went to Sean sequel. Connery. A wizard is never late, Frodo Baggins. Oh. oh. Nor is he early. 
He arrives precisely <laughs> I'm missing when up the actors. <laughs> Before turning to Ian McKellen, the producers of The Lord of the Rings asked Connery to play Gandalf. They buttered him up with an amazing offer. $30 million up front, plus 15% of the entire series box God office damn. returns. However, Connery reportedly didn't understand the role and turned them down. Go back to the shadow. Had he taken it, he would have been $450 million richer. That's gotta hurt. At least he'll always cool have James Bond. James Bond. <laughs> Bond. James Bond. Number five, Do you Jodie think he Foster. Was like a damn? Everyone remembers Anthony Hopkins as <laughs> Hannibal Lecter, while Jodie Foster is often given short shrift. I'm here to learn from you. Silence of the land. Maybe you can decide for yourself whether or not I'm qualified enough to do that. However, she's just as important yes, towards the sure. legacy of the film, and her best actress win ensured that the it. Silence of the Lambs took home the big five Oscars. Those being picture, director, adapted screenplay, actor, and actress. Quid pro quo, doctor. Therefore, the studio knew just how important both Hopkins and Foster were, and reportedly offered them both $15 million to return for Hannibal. Foster originally claimed to be involved, but later rejected the offer. She found the sequel too grisly, and she was working on a movie of her own titled Flora Plum at the time. That movie well? never came to fruition, oh. and Foster was replaced by Julianne Moore in the 2001 sequel. Given the chance, you would deny me my life, wouldn't you? Not your life. My freedom, just that. You take that from me. Number four, Elf. Will Ferrell. It's hard to make a new Christmas classic. Has it seems like everything under the sun regarding the Christmas has already been done. He's seen all the same take over was, was And then along legendary. came Elf in 2003, proving that there was still some mileage left on Santa's sleigh. Part of what made Elf so good was Will Ferrell, whose character Buddy is now a holiday icon. Director John Favreau has repeatedly shown interest in making a sequel, and Farrell was reportedly offered a juicy $29 million paycheck God if damn. he returned. No, no, but buddy, don't, uh, you, you don't have to call me, okay? Sometimes it's crazy to think idea, people are putting down But Farrell repeatedly money, shuts discussions though. down by pulling a Jim Carrey and claiming that he doesn't really do sequels. Farrell also jokes about his age, saying that a buddy the middle-aged elf would never work. Anchorman too? An angry elf. Number three, Shaquille O'Neal. O'Neal is one of the biggest names in basketball history, serving as a four-time NBA champion, three-time NBA Finals MVP, and 15-time All-Star. Owing to his incredible fame and riches, a little coffee chain called Starbucks approached Shaq and asked him to invest in the company. However, O'Neal turned them down, telling then-CEO Howard that Schultz that, fun? quote, black people don't drink coffee. Magic Johnson scooped up the opportunity, and in 2010, he sold his stake back to Starbucks for an estimated $70 million. I'm not very competitive. It's not necessary. O'Neill has claimed that he feels a sting of God regret damn. and shame every time he sees a Starbucks, realizing that he walked away from tens of millions of dollars. Even Shaquille needs a reminder every once in a while of what's really important and why he's doing all his damn work in the first place. Number two, Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. This Massachusetts born, actor is unimaginably legacy? rich, but he could have been unfathomably rich had he taken a particular offer from James Cameron. Episode? What? I was free. Turn down Avatar? Sure, but Avatar would be so different with Matt Damon. But up. would it, though? Damon told British GQ in 2019 that he was personally offered the lead role in Avatar. In place of his traditional salary, Damon was offered 10% of the movie's box office returns. He turned it down, saying that he didn't want to cause problems with, quote, all his friends on the Bourne Ultimatum. If you were in your office right now, we'd be having this conversation face to face. Avatar ended up grossing $2.79 billion. Mm. So if Damon had taken the deal, he could have walked mm. away with almost $280 million mm. for one movie. Damon reportedly regrets passing up the opportunity to work with Cameron, but as he says, it's not like his kids are going hungry. Venezuela, that was some mean that's, that's a brag. Before like, we yeah, continue, I could have got sure to subscribe to our channel million and dollars, ring the bell to get notified about our home. latest videos. You will have the option to be <laughs> notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Dave Chappelle. Uh, no, this Dave famous Chappelle. comedian remains the poster child, or Wasn't poster man, 50? for valuing artistic integrity and personal contentment over fame and fortune. Exactly. Chappelle grew That's wildly the successful with Chappelle's show, and Comedy Central reportedly offered him an astounding $55 million contract. And I'm not 
disrespecting the UN, see even though they don't got no army. Still lives on. Go sell some medicine, bitches. Oh, can relate to <laughs> modern <laughs> society. <laughs> However, the world-famous star was growing disillusioned with his fame, the rigorous shooting schedule, the creative direction of the show, and the Hollywood industry as a whole. Oh! Oh! Yeah. I'm Tyrone Biggum. I heard that I can win a lot of money, and I get a pig testicle done with all the fixings. You gotta play to win! Realizing that he had grown discontented, Chappelle stopped production and took a spiritual trip to South Africa to clear his head. He literally walked away from both the show and his $55 million contract, 55. and he now lives in peaceful seclusion in Ohio, only doing projects he wants to do, like stand-up comedy. <laughs> I'm just getting started, bitches. <laughs> do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, oh, and see. be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about our you. latest videos. <laughs> if you rank in it from amounts, that is. Goddamn, Matt Damon. That's a boss move, though. Big ups. That was an interesting video. Some of these I already knew. Some of them really shocked me. Some of them I didn't even know existed. I, I guess they didn't make sense. Like the mask and elf. I didn't know those two had sequels in line because I thought they were one and done great movies like Untouchables. But people were trying to touch them. Thank God for the actors, because I think they would have ruined them. Yeah. Because there are some franchises that were ruined because of sequels. Terminator, Maze Runner. <laughs> Naming a few. Anyway, tell me what you guys think. Hit that subscribe button. Deuces.